Hello my friends, how are you doing? In this chapter of our artistic journey, I want to show you four amazing tricks on how to get better results with Affinity Photo. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all the patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Let's get started. So. The first trick is something you have seen me do a lot in my videos and live streams, but I have found a better way on how to do that. So imagine we have here this picture on the right side. We have a lot of layers with all the adjustments and effects and things we added to the picture. And then as a last trick, what I like to do is that I right click on the upper layer and then I go to merge visible and this flattens everything together to just one JPEG layer and then I set this JPEG layer to soft light and you can see it makes the picture pop. The contrast is higher, the colors come out, it is a really nice effect. You can use opacity to adjust how strong you want this effect to be. but it turns out there is an even better way to do that. So let's delete that layer. And instead of what you're doing with Merge Visible, you simply create an adjustment layer for curves that sits on top of everything else, all the other layers below it. And then you set that one also blend mode soft light. As you can see here, soft light. And it has the very same effect as you can see it pops nice contrast, nice colors. You can still use opacity to adjust how much of the effect you want. But in addition, you have, of course, now the curve. So you can play around with that and see if you get some better results by adjusting those curves. And of course, you also have the color channels that you can use. So this is a really nice and easy way to do that. The second trick is some people have a problem to understand how to use the pen tool because this is where you would create a line. So select the pen, the pen tool and I want to go and start not with the N here but with the E and the V from never. It's a bit more complicated so you can see better how I use it. I will um, zoom in here and the trick of what you're doing when you're using the pen tool is don't click on the corners or the curves here directly where you have the strongest bend. Click on the areas where it's rather straight and then you adjust the rest. So I will show you how to do that. So we can click here and then I make another click over here, but I drag it a little bit out in the other direction. So you can see here we have a line and we have a bend in here. Let's adjust the stroke first. So let's set this to white and make the width small. You can see down here, uh, up here, you have the stroke and you can set the width of the stroke. Uh, let's set it like this, good. So now that we have this, what I want you to do is to press and hold the control key on your keyboard. And this will give you this other mouse pointer, which is white. And with that mouse pointer, you can move in here and adjust these handles that you have. And you can also grab the line and move this outwards. You can see this gives you an easy way to adjust these lines. Here's another handle that you can use to bend this over here. And you can also use this to move these points around. So let's move this a little bit lower and adjust our two handles. So this is actually following the line of our um, letter. Okay, good. So we have set this. Now let go of the control key and make another point over here. Stretch this out. You can see this works really good. Here we have a pointy one. So you can simply click here because this is like turning around almost 180 degrees. So in this case, you would actually click here. So click and then you click again over here, not here in the bend because it's kind of hard to set up these bands if you have a point in there. Click over here and you stretch it out in the right direction. You can see that works very easy. So the next one we can set up here like that. Let's see, that works pretty good. Okay, so here we have a special case that I also want to show you. And that is now if I press the control key and I move this, I would move both sides of these handles simultaneously 
so to give me a nicer kind of shape that flows um, softer and you can see you can bend this in and uh, this would actually work we can leave it like that but what I want to show you is that if you hold control and then also press alt on your keyboard and then use this point you can see I can use just one of these handles without the other one following me so I can actually move them independently if I have to if a special occasion arises where I need that again find the flattest point between the curves so we can click here and um, this is actually okay let's bend this out a little bit maybe and then where do we want to click here there's a bend here so let's click here so we can bend this down a little bit and the next one I would say mm, let's put it here stretch this up a little bit hold control and maybe alt to bring this over here a little bit like that and then the next one let's put this down here so we are almost done with this again control and alt so I will push this in a little bit push this over a little bit so we have a very nice follow and there I think we are done let's pull this in a little bit this doesn't have a round um, ending you can either blur this uh, let's see we can actually this should be round it's not round um, but when you zoom out of that so you can see like this it doesn't matter too much and you can also put a little bit of blur on that so it's softer it actually looks like the neon light and then we just put some glow on that we will color pick the color from over here so you can see here's the color here's the color pick you click that move it over here to the color you want to have and then click again to actually use that color and then just set the radius up and you can see we get a little bit of glow light so this actually now looks like the font down here is also glowing like the rest and this is how you create a curve that follows in this case kind of a complicated font so let's go to our next trick that I want to show you and that is that I was asked how do you make a frame around a picture and you might have realized that it's kind of hard to create a shape like a rectangle so let's create a rectangle real quick and if you would now duplicate that rectangle and you would say okay I'm just I'm just resizing this with the same ratio you can see that the sides are not equal this is a thin side this is a thick side it's kind of hard to set up a frame but there's a very easy trick how you can do that on your picture and that is by also clicking on the shape and also using your line tool because the line tool will create an outline around your picture so if I click this and I set up the width you can see I get a line and this line can be as big as I want here it goes to 100 uh, pt but you can enter a number and say I want to go to 300 and this will be bigger so that's not a problem you can also here set the stroke color to anything you want let's set it to white and you have the ability in here as you can see that the cap the join and the alignment and to set up for example here it says round corners this is the round join and then you have one where you have this kind of edge and you have one where you have this spiky edge around it so it's really like a box frame around that and you can say you want it to be on the outside of the picture on the inside of the picture or in the middle so it's same distance from both sides depending on the usage or the way you want to use that probably in most cases the outside is the best choice and you can see you can simply create a frame around your picture without any hassle it's a super easy thing to set up now comes the fourth trick that I want to show you and this is about masking problems with the glow I'm not sure if you ran into that before but there is a problem in affinity photo I have again this outline let's reduce that and let's say I make here an outer glow like that make it blue in the color like this maybe make it a little bit bigger 200 okay cool so now if I want to set up a mask 
around that because I want to limit the glow around it. I have a big problem because the glow is not affected by the mask and if it is affected it has kind of a it doesn't really work well with the colors. You can see here I can't put a mask on that. I only can put a mask on my shape and then the glow will follow but this is not what I want to have. I want to have a limitation in the glow. For example, something is in front of the glow and I just want to reduce it. So this mask doesn't help me. You could think that now if you take the shape and put it into a group, so click on the um, click on the layer and then control G to put it into a group and then put a mask on the group. But now you have a second problem and this is when I draw the mask, you can see now it does actually reduce the glow around my shape where I don't want to have it, but it makes this ugly color effect here for some reason. So this doesn't work either. Okay, so here is the solution on how you can put a mask on a glow. I would suggest that you take your ellipse without a group like that, just your layer with the ellipse, with the glow around or any other shape that you have and right click duplicate that so you have a backup and then just turn one of them off. So it is like this and now you will rasterize it. Rasterize, if it asks you preserve layer effects, you say no. So don't uh, like remove the hook. Rasterize. It will look strange at first because now it doesn't have the blend mode set up. So go here for the layer for your blend mode, set it to screen again. And so you have the same blend effect as you had with glow. And now if you put a mask on that, you can have a nice mask as you can see that is limiting the glow and it does not have any kind of ugly color effect. So this is how you limit a glow with a mask in a kind of easy way, a little bit of a workaround, but it works great and it gives you a really great result to limiting the area where the glow can go. Okay, thank you very much. This was the four awesome tricks for Affinity Photo. I hope they helped you out. Subscribe to my channel, like the video, share it if possible and hit the little, I think, bell I can see you get the updates when I upload a new video. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next chapter of our journey. Bye.